So I just want to say I'm really sorry if at any point in this video you hear my birds, there they are, upstairs. Um, they're like right upstairs and I'm sitting by the stairs. So I apologize if you can hear them, but I'm like way too dizzy and hurting too much to get up and move right now. So this is where I'm gonna film. So if they're being too loud, just welcome to my world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to Educating Shani. Let's try that again. Hi Shani Fannies, welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi. So today I wanted to give you a quick health update um, and then it's gonna be pretty short. And so I also went on Instagram and asked people to leave me questions and I'm just gonna pick the first five questions that were left for me. So, but first let me give you a health update because I just got back from the doctor, finally. Uh, I was able to get in to see her. And basically, for those of you that are new or don't know about my health, it's a really long story. <laughs> but um, I have a lot of health problems. I've been sick since I was a kid and it's just my life and I know it sucks and it sucks for me, it sucks for other people in my life. It really sucks. I'm sorry, I can't help it. But um, recently, my most recent problem, I've got a whole bunch of problems, but my most recent one is these killer ulcers that I have and passing out all the time are the two biggest ones right now. So the problem is that Danny's new insurance doesn't hit for another couple of weeks. And so there's not much we can do yet, but we can at least help me to feel better and try and manage pain and nausea and all that stuff until Danny's insurance kicks back in and then I can get what I need to get, which is another endoscopy to check how the ulcers are doing. I need to get probably a colonoscopy. I need to get a lapar laparoscopy, lapscrops, I don't know what that's called, but that's for endometriosis that I've been needing to get for literally like 10 years. So it's time. Um, oh, 12 years, 13 years. Oh, wait. 12 years, I don't know, a long time. Right before Christmas, around that time, for like six months prior to Christmas, I guess, that whole time, uh, I just didn't care. I didn't, I, I wasn't, I was, I am filming. Are we done? I was in this weird place where I didn't care to get better. I didn't care to go to the doctor. I didn't care to follow up. I didn't care to go get my surgery done. I didn't care about any of that because I was living day by day just trying to keep myself alive. And so I wasn't responsible because I didn't care. Like my life was literally every single day, how am I gonna survive today? And everything would take precedent over getting all that stuff down done because my anxiety would take over and like, oh my gosh, I'm shaking, I can't call the doctor and I can't get it done and I can't get in to do it and I don't know how and I freak out and like it just feels like in my mind that everything is just closing in on me and getting worse and 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 worse. I'm so overwhelming, you know, mentally and physically to even like consider doing any of that. It takes a lot for me to leave the house. It takes a lot for me to get to the doctor and to get to the surgeries and to set it up when Danny can be there with me and all that stuff. And it would stress me out so much that I, it's like my brain would blow a fuse and then I couldn't fix it and I couldn't do it, you know? But I've made it my goal this year <laughs> to try and get myself healthy. Basically for right now, the plan is to do nausea management, pain management until the insurance kicks in and then we can go back, do another endoscopy, possibly a colonoscopy. I hope not, but they might want to. They probably will. So we can do that and we can get my endometriosis surgery and hopefully that will help and I can get another iron transfusion. I'm due for another iron transfusion um, and then another blood transfusion if I need that as well. I'll also be getting tested for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and POTS as soon as our insurance kicks in. But that's the update. I know it's frustrating because we don't have any like set things yet, but we couldn't because of Danny's insurance. So we just have to wait a couple weeks. I'll be okay. I mean, the doctors are helping me manage all of this. And so it, they're being very kind about it and very helpful about it. But I'm, I'm on the mend, like I'm getting better and I'm working on it and I'm doing so well with my eating disorder. 
so proud of myself. I'm painting, I'm selling my paintings. Anyway, that's the health update. So now I'm gonna answer a few questions from Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me. Educating underscore Shani is my name on Instagram. So let's see what the first five questions are. Hey guys, I'm in the middle of filming a video and I need some questions. So hurry and send me your questions. I'm just gonna pick the first five that I receive. So hurry and do it, please. Thank you so much. Okay, goodbye. We have two questions. <laughs> That's okay. I just barely asked them, so it's okay. All right, well, let's answer those two then. So the first one sent in was from Assorted Trash Princess, and it says, tips for dealing with chronic pain. It's funny you should ask, because that's what I'm going for right now. Um, there's a lot of things. I've had chronic pain all throughout my life. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was 14, and then I've had other issues too, and other like health issues that cause a lot of pain, and the side effects are a lot of pain and stuff, so I'm the right person to ask for this. However, I'm not, because I'm not a doctor. All right, I'm just gonna tell you what I do and what works best for me, but I would really, really strongly suggest that you go to the doctor and come up with a pain management plan and hopefully they can help you whatever they think that is. Like everybody's different and every body is different. So you never know what's gonna help you. But for me, um, pain meds help a lot. And um, when I don't do that, I have uh, my heating pad that I put wherever on which area of my body that I'm hurting the most. I'll use ice packs, put those on whatever part of my body is hurting the most. Um, keeping myself busy. I know that sounds weird, but like keeping my mind busy kind of takes it away. And like some side effects need pain meds, some don't need pain meds, some need a heating pad, some need... So like for me personally, um, my two biggest pain, chronic pain issues are come with my fibromyalgia and my endometriosis. And for my endometriosis, I get really painful periods and I'm, I also get a lot of pain when I'm not on my period, but it is excruciating when I'm on my period, which I am right now. So yay, good job for me. Oh, I forgot to talk about that before. That's part of my health update, whoops. I started a period yesterday after just ending one two weeks ago. So I asked my doctor today, I was like, listen, every time they give me a blood transfusion in the hospital, I start another period unexpectedly. Like, is that bizarre or what? She's like, yeah, that's super bizarre. So, but again, we can't check any of that and figure out what's wrong until for a couple of weeks. So anyway, what was I saying? Who knows? Why do I always look at myself? Ew. Okay, who knows? What was I saying? I don't know what I was saying. Oh, chronic pain. So for me, the biggest, so for fibromyalgia, um, pain meds help me. I used to take ibuprofen every single day and that's how I developed my ulcers. So I can't take that anymore, which sucks. Uh, the other one that sucks is naproxen. I can't take that anymore um, because I can't take any NSAIDs, but naproxen is a freaking miracle worker for cramps for your period. So even if you're not chronically in pain, ladies out there, if, if you get bad periods and painful periods, I am telling you, naproxen sodium, which is a leave, it's the same thing, is the best painkiller that you can buy over the, over the counter for cramps. Like it's better than, Pamperin and and uh, Midol and all those period things like it's way better. Trust me, from someone coming from someone with severe endometriosis and severe heavy painful periods, just trust me. Naproxen is a lifesaver. So, but I can't take that right now. So, right now I'm doing heating pads and pain meds, other pain meds that don't have NSAIDs in them. But I just would suggest to go to your doctor. Um, I know there's different exercises you could do for different issues. So I just would go to your doctor and ask what would be the best pain management for you. Another question sent in was from Charmaine. Hi Charmaine, hey girl, I love you. Um, and I love you too, a sorted trash princess. I love all of you. Okay, Charmaine said, how, do you get, how did you get to a happy place with your teeth? Um, I'm getting six removed and two of them that you can see. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you, dear, and you already know this, but I'll just remind you, it's not gonna be easy. Um, it's gonna be very painful. I would rather be honest with you than like have you get your hopes up that it's not gonna be that bad. And you know what? Maybe for you it's not, but for me personally, it was the worst pain I've ever had. Um, but how did I get to a place where I was happy? And again, that, oh, th that goes with the other thing. You need to make sure Talk to your doctor before you get the surgery to 
um, set up a pain management plan before you go in because I woke up in excruciating pain. Like they gave me all kinds of like over the counter pills and they did absolutely nothing. And I had to go to the emergency room. I was screaming in pain. Like it was so bad. It was the worst pain I've ever, I've ever had. So if you're like me and you're really like sensitive to pain, you don't have a, a big pain tolerance, then talk to your doctor ahead of time to get that taken care of. Because when you first come out of surgery, it's going to not feel good. How did I get to a happy place? <laughs> excuse me with my teeth it gets better i guess you get used to them and now it's like it's all i know um so i don't even think right now i'm still debating whether or not to get my permanence or to leave a take outable one because it's part of my public speaking so we'll see that that's another thing on my list that's stressing me out that i need to go get done but i guess just time you'll get used to it. You will. You'll absolutely get used to it, Charmaine. Um, just trust the doctors. Do what they say. Uh, take antibiotics if they want you to, even though those suck and they hurt your stomach and they suck. Uh, do whatever they say. Rest as much as you can. And then just time. I, that's the only answer I have for you of how I got happy with my teeth. Time. It took a lot of time, but everyone's different. So, we <gasps> got We got another question. Official Samarang or Samar and I don't know. I love you though. She said, are you worried about coronavirus in WA where I live? Six people are dead. What's WA? I don't know, I don't know where that is. I'm sorry. I suck at that. I'm so sorry. Six people are dead? Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. It's funny you bring that up because I went to the doctor today, as we all know. And um, when I was in the waiting room, there were like probably 30 people in the waiting room, which is really weird. Like that's super crowded for my doctor's office. And I'm not kidding you, half of them were wearing masks. And I was like, why are they wearing masks? And um, I don't, I'm not trying to be, is this racist? I, I'm not trying to be racist, but there were some Asian people there that like couldn't speak English. And you could tell that they were traveling. You could tell that they were like visiting. Um, so that concerned me again. I'm sorry if that offends anybody. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I actually don't even know a lot about it. I've, I've been told different things. I've heard that people are dying. I've heard it's just another flu that people are freaking out, making too big of a deal of. I've heard that there's definitely no cure for it. So it's really scary, but there's also no cure for the flu. So it's kind of the same thing. I don't know. All I know is that if I get it, then that sucks. And if you get it, that sucks. And I'm so sad that people are dying from it. Like that really sucks. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. And if it's, and if you've got six people in your state alone, yeah, girl. Um, I will tell you this, in our church, our, our leaders have suggested that we go get food storage just in case there's some sort of like quarantine situation. Um, my church believes in food storage no matter what, like we're, uh, like we're encouraged to get always have a, a lot of food storage that could last you months or even a year or two just in case anything happens like we they just want us to be prepared but for this they're really buckling down about it so every time I go to the store I'm seeing people that are buying like loads and loads and cases of canned food and boxed food and all that stuff so we have quite a bit of food storage. A lot of it's expired, but so we might have to go and get some more just to be safe. But that's all I know about it. And that's all I feel about it. I don't know. Tell me in the comments below, what do you guys think about it? And what do you guys feel about it? Okay, we got one more. This is from Emma, Emma Dar Hassan, which is my cousin, hey girl. She said, what is your favorite thing about life? Love you, cuz. I love you too, honey. Um, my favorite thing about life is Danny my family, painting, you guys, and food. Oh, and my birds, and food, and food. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember forever and always that you are beautiful, you are worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye.